Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it looks just like a capacitor. But look at the huge size of this thing. And first I didn't have a clue. What the heck is this thing? Because it's an unmarked unnamed device we got something here with a capacitance adjustment see in micro micro farads that will of course be pico farads so 1000 pico farad is obviously one nano fantastic and um I posted a picture of this in uh, one of the Facebook groups asking what can this be and a few came up with some good good suggestions and that actually led me to some other searches and then I figured it out. This thing here is called a Johnson capacitor a fuel gauge tester for US Air Force. Type 03 NP number 106. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Some old, old. Um, I think it's about 1956 because I found some other information um, in some other documents that looks very, very much like this unit. It's uh, called a Simmons MD1. But it's also a general radio. And this one have the full documentation about how they use this and why they use this. So the thing is, with a very, very high precision, stable and reliable capacitor, you can use this in a bridge setup where you measure the properties of fuel for your aircrafts using capacitance method this way you can prove is this fuel exactly what i'm used to getting or is it not pure is it another brand what is going on with your fuel that was obviously a thing in the old old days so how accurate is this capacitor today I will, of course, make a few measurements. But look at that. A dehydrator. And this one is nice and dry. These became bigger and slimy and stick when uh, exposed to uh, humidity. So that means we haven't seen any kind of humidity inside, inside this, uh, this box. And there's also a um, rubber gasket all the way around here. And I believe around all the knobs and dials and switches, you will have uh, rubber gaskets. I will put in a few pictures of other brands or other capacitors from about the same age and newer that's um, using the same dial system or the same capacitor, the same system here i don't know if i can put some light the right way but let's see if i can show this so there's definitely a gearbox oh there's another funky thing about this gearbox if you see the the fine scale readout can you see it goes from zero to 50. so of course this is a super good idea when we want to go from a thousand to see if we go this way it makes good sense, right? All the way to 50 again. Fantastic. So there we have a fine scale of the last two digits. All right. So what happens if I want to go from here? 950. And now I want to go to 1000. You see the problem? See, it works pretty good here. Well, what about... Oh, do you... You see? Now you need to be a math genius 
<laughs> oh, I think this is funny. And then you figure it out, right? So let's try and do a little measurements on this fantastic thing. So this is 1000, 0, 0, right? As accurate as I can do. So I had to add a little guard or a chassis connection that will shield this capacitor and the everything that couples to the chassis. I am using a four pin um, capacitance measurement method and I am testing at 10 kilohertz and uh, I think I got about one nano farad. Three zeros is 0.1%. Just saying, that is a little bit wild when we think about the age, right? And we got some other ranges here. So there's, we will have some built in capacitors and they switch. And um, as far as I can see, by looking at some of the documentations I was able to figure out, we got a 1000 to add. So this is 1000 plus 1000, right? So it should read 2000. Only 0.7% off. Oh, well, no, not exactly, but it's, it's this is really, really low. Uh, I mean, the error here is super low. So this is 3000. Okay, here we have a lot of error. And the next one should be 4000. And there should be 5000. And the last one should be 6000. I mean, I am a little bit impressed. It, I mean, even today it would be difficult for me to make those um, capacitors. And this switch feels really, really good. I also love this big, big knob here. Really good feeling. And of course, by using this uh, guard system here, I get this good reading and if I touch the case see I'm not able to affect the readout so that is super good so inside the case we were supposed to find the Johnson capacitor sheet with the little schematic and the little explainer but somebody took that sheet away from the box so that is a little bit annoying. Maybe I can find a picture from the internet to put in here to show you how it was supposed to look. The capacitor is of course very, very big and super, super nice. I must say I've seen a few of these this size before, but this one is just beautiful. The thick, thick aluminium frame it just talks about stability and everything here is really made of aluminium the little bit of brass parts and i think this uh yeah this is also brass and this is uh what is that chromed brass and uh that's all the readouts and of course they engraved this probably to fit the capacitor right but there's also those tiny little adjustments right there you see those little individual flip flopsies here i will of course not touch them but the idea is you can bend them slightly up and down depending on how you want to calibrate this capacitor so that is a fantastic way to do it I don't understand exactly what we have here. There's a big round part over there and another one over there. What exactly? Why is that the case? I don't know. And here is the and here is the readouts like that. And this is the locking. And here we can see the thread. And it goes soop, into lock and pushes into the shaft, making it impossible to move. 
Hmm. If I put yeah, okay, then it goes tough. Probably harder. Yeah, okay, that is good. So that is how it works. Ah, so it's a conic thread. Oh, pretty cool. And that will be the add capacitance switch uh, where we got this look plus one, two, three, four, five. And they did this by using only three capacitors. And it's because it's only one and two and two. And then the different capacitors to add is handled by the design of the switch. I found a nice little schematic showing exactly how this works. And this is a good way to save uh, capacitors because those capacitors here, they're obviously crazy, crazy expensive. Maybe there's a brand written on them somewhere. I will have to see if I can take out one of them really, really carefully and uh, measure them and see what is uh, going on. And they really tried to make the capacitance on the wires here couple as little as possible to anything else. You see, it's just flying leads and all that kind of stuff here. Really, really beautiful design. So here is one of the capacitors, and that one was really, really difficult to get out. Maybe we can look up this part number and see the exact date range. And it says exactly 2000 micro, micro farads. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. And that will be uh, two nano farads in today's standards. And um, it's of course perfectly sealed and extra sealed again here. The fun thing is, if I take this and do a, I have it in my hand and do a little bit of tapping on it, I can feel a lot of moving parts in here. So I believe we got all sorts of plates in here and it's just air. The isolation is air, I think so. But I cannot open this one because it's, of course, going back to the unit. So unfortunately, we will not know anything more deeper science inside this one. So. I think this is all I wanted to show you about this uh, fantastic unit. So thank you very much for watching. See you around. Bye bye.